Lord this morning. I know there was a time change and uh, things are a little out of sorts as we get started today, but praise God, I don't know about you, but I felt good having that extra hour of sleep last night. I'm sure we'll be dealing with that later tonight, though, in Jesus' name. Praise God. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. I'm going to read this scripture this morning out of the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 4. It says as follows, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. I want to remind you this morning, and I want to publicly share, publicly state, I give God thanks for you. We're entering into that season of Thanksgiving, amen, this time where we're focused on Thanksgiving and celebrating with friends and family. But we must always remember to be thankful for the one thing that is greater than anything else we could have ever received in this lifetime, and it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God that's at work in you. It's the grace of God that's at work in us. It's the grace of God that's at work bringing not only salvation, but through everything that is in our life. And so let's give God thanks and praise this morning. If you want to lift up your hands, if you want to praise him and say, Jesus, thank you for bringing into us into your house today, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, God, that sees us forward always, Jesus. We worship you this morning, God, and we give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is amazing. 
church and just give him thanks. Give him thanks this morning for his grace, for his love, for his purpose, for his sacrifice on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. God, we don't have the hours, we don't have the minutes, we don't have the time to sing of all the good things that Jesus has done for us, church. Whether you found yourself in the mountain or you have found yourself in the valley, you know that your God is with you. You know that he's been with you from the very beginning of your infancy to the day you went down in those baptismal waters, to the day you lifted up your hands and declared his goodness and his mercy. God has been fighting for you. He's been fighting for your life. Come on, let's worship the Lord together.
shout it to the Lord. Let's shout it with everything that we have, church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, some of us need to remember how to shout to Jesus, amen? It's fine and dandy when, when things are okay and when you can just clap and you can come to church. And but when you really have a need, amen, when there's really something going on in your life, uh, when there's a situation that has not been resolved, uh, when there's something that you got to learn to cry out in the name of Jesus... There was a man on the side of the road, and everybody was passing him by, and Jesus was walking by. But when Jesus walked by him, he knew that there was an opportunity. He knew that there was a, a, tra a, a chance for his situation to be transformed. And so he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. That's what the song is singing about, church. We got to shout in Jesus' name when we go to work in the morning. In Jesus' name when we come home and our kids get home. In Jesus' name, all those problems, all those situations, everything that we've been going through, be cleansed in the name of Jesus. He didn't go to a cross for nothing. Amen? It's not just a story we read. It's not just something we believe. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And when you shout the name of Jesus, the demons flee and tremble and they leave. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a great thing we have in the precious name of Jesus, church. Oh, I said what a great thing we have in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we get up here to lead praise and worship, I'm not concerned so much as to how you look right now. Amen. It's okay if you don't clap at a song, if you don't sing with us. It's all right. My concern is your condition going through this week. Amen. I need to make sure that when you leave this place, these songs are in your mind. Because I don't know what you listen to when you leave this place. Amen. I need to make sure that the message gets to your heart. Uh, we need to make sure that the message gets to your heart uh, so that you can have a victorious week in Jesus' name. Because you are not, you are not anything less than a conqueror. Amen. You need to walk strong. You need to walk in confidence. Not in confidence in what you can do. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you to leave this place saying, wow, Brother Johnny sounded great today. Lord have mercy. I know that that's not how anybody ever leaves this place. Praise God. But I need you to leave this place saying, my God is strong. My God is great. And with him, I can walk through this and we can accomplish all things through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, speaking about that grace, we want to keep on praying for healing, church. Amen. We want to keep on praying for healing from cancer. If you can put the slide up there, praise God. Sister Norma's always on it. Um, for healing from cancer, the names are up here. Other healings as well in Jesus' name. Of course, we continue to pray for the needs all across the world. We know we have uh, members that have family in Acapulco. We know we have uh, people suffering all over the world in Israel and Ukraine. Um, and there's all kinds of things happening. But not only pray, pray for these places in the sense of the need, pray for the word of God to complete its work. Amen. Because we are living in a day where every way we turn, every year just feels like something else is going to fall. Something else is going to happen. And when we see that, we ought not to walk around and say, oh my gosh, everything's falling apart. Things are, what do I do? We go to Jesus, amen. We know what to do. And so in our prayers, in our fasting, let us keep our brothers and sisters in mind. Of course, we continue to pray for Sister Rhonda as well, who continues to get better. Um, and we want to add to the list a healing in Jesus' name. Uh, Nathan Lopez, praise God. His uh, sister was sharing with me. He's back home. And we want to pray for, for God to, to touch his life as he's with his parents and that God gives them the strength to continue to work with him. Amen. We want him back in church. We want him back in the presence of God. And we want the presence of God to make him whole in Jesus' name. You all have known him most of his life. And we give God honor and glory for him. And for what God is doing in their lives. And we're going to ask that you continue to keep him in prayer. Keep the family, the Lopez family, in prayer in Jesus' name. Uh, and and uh, all the saints, if you have a prayer need, why don't you just lift up your hand. Let's pray for these needs right now before we do anything else. I, I know in Jesus' name we all have needs. Let's go before the Lord and just lift up your hand and just say, Jesus, 
I call upon you, Jesus. You don't have to say the need. You don't have to say anything else. Just, Jesus, I call upon you this morning, God. I call upon you to move, Lord Jesus, in our situations, in our families, in our homes, Lord. We open the door right now with hands uplifted, and we say, come in, Jesus. Come in, Lord, and dine with us because we know where your presence is, Lord Jesus. Let us be, Lord Jesus, like, like, like the woman, Lord, who opened the door, Lord Jesus, and didn't worry about the dishes, Lord, but came to your presence is just sat at your presence lord let us sit at your presence today god we lift up our hands and we say lord move lord on our family on our friends in our lives lord jesus over physical ailment lord we give you the victory lord jesus we declare god over mental instability lord we declare for you have not given us a spirit of fear but one of love and of power and of a sound mind and we declare the word of god today lord jesus we declare the word of god over finances we declare the word of god over situations and, and economic and, and political situations over this world, oh Lord Jesus. For we declare, Lord God, that we are the living of the Lord, that we are the church of the living God, and our, our blessing is not brought about, brought about by the circumstance that we find ourselves in, but our blessing is brought about by the Lord Most High, who can touch in every situation, who can move in any circumstance. Lord, we believe on you today, Jesus. We believe on you for that healing, God. We believe on you for that movement, Lord Jesus, especially for those who are here today, those who are listening online. Lord, touch their lives, touch their hearts. Give us the victory in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody shouts, amen, amen, hallelujah. We want to remind everybody that the youth this week, I'm sorry, the youth on the 19th, in Jesus' name, Friendsgiving Feast, in Jesus' name. We're going to pick up an offering right now. Dorcas, don't forget that you've got a to RSVP for your women's event. And let's give God the honor and the glory, picking up an offering in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are the Lord of all creation. You are the rock of my salvation. God, the 
Praise the Lord, church. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's wonderful and glorious to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We have come this morning to worship and to praise and glorify and exalt that name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who has redeemed us. Who has cleansed us. Who has found us. Hallelujah. I was lost. You were lost. But he found us. Hallelujah. And with his precious blood. He claims our lives. He claims, hallelujah, every one of us. And now has made us to be sons and daughters of a living God. We were blind, but now we see. Hallelujah. And we ha he has given us the understanding of the greatest revelation of all. Hallelujah. He opened up our minds and hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. An understanding of a great revelation of who he is. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to invite you now. Let us pray. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Oh, how we thank you, Lord, for that precious blood that was shed on Calvary for me and everyone in this place. How we thank you, God, that not only, Lord, hallelujah, did you die on the cross, but you rose, Lord, hallelujah, to give us an unction, an anointing that we have never experienced. Through your Holy Spirit, God, you have filled the church with a power, hallelujah, and with your name, Jesus, amen, hallelujah. You may be seated. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name, it shall teach you all things and bring all things unto you into your remembrance. Hallelujah. Which is the Holy Ghost in whom the Father sent us. Hallelujah. And all things bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. Peace I leave you, and my peace I give unto you. Let Not as the world knows, hallelujah, but let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid, for we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Johnny, thank you for this moment and at the same time. Amen. What you were talking about, you could have kept on going. That's my message. Hallelujah. Amen. My message is going to be simple, but something that we've all experienced. I'm not going to put, I told her not to put a whole bunch of verses up there, but one main verse that's without through whole, the whole Bible. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the one that came and interrupted my life and gave me understanding. He gave me wisdom. He gave me enlightening. He opened my eyes so I could see, hallelujah, his glory. Hallelujah. Because I was lost, but he found me. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I would like to reach over to your heart, and I would like for you to be sensitive to the word. It is important, very important, that we be in contact with that name that is above all name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need a touch from Jesus. I need a touch from Jesus. Paz de Cristo, hermanos. Hallelujah. I would like to get your attention and to be very very explicit on this. That there is no other name like the name of Jesus. He came to this world in a time of of turmoil. When Jesus was born, we're getting close to the month of 
December, the birth of Jesus. And when he was born, he wasn't born in the glorious city of David, the one that the Lord had given them promise, the place where he told Moses, you're going to go to a new land, hallelujah, where the milk and honey flows. Jesus was not born in that place, in a palace. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in a manger, because the world was in chaos. Ever since then, up to today, the world is in chaos. Our surroundings is in chaos all the time. Every day we see different things. You cannot go someplace without seeing the sirens and the policemen chasing after somebody. Amen. But I thank God that you and I have found a trust in the Lord. Have found Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he has touched us and blessed us. Hallelujah. Two words I would like to put in your heart. The number one, actually three of them. Number one, we're going to keep it up there, Jesus. The other one is believe and trust. We need a touch from the Lord. Psalm 61 says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed? Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. For those, hallelujah, for thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower for my enemies. I will abide in the tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, for thou art my God. O oh, has he, God has heard my voice. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear the name. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. The psalmist said it real plainly and real beautiful. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Wow. Uh, isn't that wonderful and glorious to know that we are not alone? That all the trouble around you, you don't have to worry about it? At one time we did. Even though I'm going to be truthful for you. Some of you came in here today with problems, with troubles, with depression, with sickness, with what am I going to do today? What am I going to do next week? Amen. But I want to remind you, hallelujah, it doesn't matter what you're going through. There is an answer. Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. <laughs> Throughout the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, men have searched and seek for Almighty God. And we have the history of the beginning with Abraham, throughout actually with Noah and then Abraham and all the way through. And each one of the prophets. And they would seek the Lord and they had a hard time. But once they found it, hallelujah, amen, they would chase him. And they would always call upon the Lord for everything. And we call them God chasers. Hallelujah. But we don't have to chase after God. Hallelujah. Because he came to seek and find that which was lost. He found us. Hallelujah. We need to find that connection, church, with God. We need to touch. We need a touch from God. I need a touch from God. Jesus came to seek and find that which was lost. That's why the psalm said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Why? Why would he say that? Why do we say that? Do we say, let us go to the house of the Lord because it's Sunday? Do we say, let us go to the house of the Lord because I'm a Christian, I've been baptized in Jesus' name, and I have to be there? Amen. Or because I was invited. Or it's a good thing to do. No. We come because we find comfort in this place. Because the Bible tells us where there's two or three gathered in my name, I will be there, hallelujah. 
But sometimes we don't believe. We believe more in the singing, in, in the hearing, hallelujah, than the, to know that he is here. Listen to the words that the praise team was singing. They were singing that he is here, that he is a comforter, that he's going to bless you, that he will not forsake you, hallelujah. That's why I need a touch from God. That's why it, throughout the first prayer, and, and when we begin, come into church, we begin to feel something different. As we begin to worship, the songs touch our hearts, touch our lives, and we begin to feel the presence of Almighty God. Like the song says, Cuando levanto mis manos, when I pick up my, lift up my hands, hallelujah, something begins to happen, hallelujah, because there was a time where I needed an answer. And we came to church. Somebody invited us and we came. And then something happened, either through the song, either through a prayer, or either through the word, hallelujah. But something happened. There was a change in our lives and we got connected with Almighty God, the one who came to this world, hallelujah. In this month of November, I have a birthday when I was born, next week. But I also, at the end of the month, I have a, a real birthday when I was born in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 60 years I will get to be baptized in Jesus' name in a little church of Gonzales, California. Hallelujah. But that little church whew, had a blessing, hallelujah, in that place. The pastor was simple. But it was powerful. Hallelujah. I remember I was a, as a little boy, people would come and they would fill the church. And there was people outside in the windows because it had little windows. And they would open them and people were standing outside trying to listen, trying to see what was happening inside the church. Because you see, when they heard the song, when they heard the message, they were getting connected. They were being touched by Almighty God. Hallelujah. And I need that touch this morning. Hallelujah. You need that touch this morning. You know that little problem you've been having? All you do, I've got to do is I'm going to tell you what the answer is. Hallelujah. Paul Crouch wrote a song saying, Jesus is the answer for the world today. And then he said, above him, there's no other. Hallelujah. Who? Jesus is the answer that we need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But sometimes mm, we come with doubt. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to go to church, and God's going to bless me. And, uh, and we greet everybody. But inside, there's something that says, God, my grandchildren, my children, Lord, hallelujah. My family, Lord, my health, Lord, and we have so many questions. But all you got to do is say, Jesus, here I am. I come before you, Lord, asking you, God, to bless me, to touch me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little story. about a man who, the Bible says that uh, he was a hard worker, and all of a sudden, he came home, dinner was ready, and he walks into his house, and he begins to wash his hands, and, and he noticed that in the basin where he was washing his hands, because they didn't have sinks like we have today, in the, but in the basin, it became red. There was blood inside the basin. And then all of a sudden, his wife noticed it, and he noticed, she noticed that his robe was spotted with different spots of blood. And they looked at each other, and he says, what's happening? And when he rubbed his fingers, the skin began to fall off. And right away, he knew that he became diseased with that disease called leprosy. And he caught that leprosy, and he said, what do I do? And they, as, as being a, a good uh, person that used to go to church, to the synagogue, he says, I got to go before the priest and tell him 
what's happened to me. And his wife asked him, should I go with you? He said, no, no, you stay here. And he went to the high priest. And lo and behold, when they saw him, they said, oh, no, it's as far as you come. Don't come all the way in. You stay right there. And they saw his need. And they said, go and go to the encampment of the lepers. And do not come. You cannot enter into the city without making knowledge of everybody that you are a leopard. And you will dress like they do. And you will not be able to go to your home or hug your kids, your wife, or your family because you are a leopard. And he was saddened. He said, what is going to happen? Well, maybe, oh, I hope, may, maybe this will go away in a couple of days. And, and maybe in a month, if, if I take care of it, it will go away. But he knew in his mind that all the leopards that were in that encampment wouldn't last very long. That sooner or later they would die. So he went. And before you knew it, five years had gone by. And he was troubled because he couldn't hug his wife or his family. You know, we had a little taste of that a few years, a couple of years ago with a pandemic of COVID. Okay, it took a lot of lives and it shut a lot of doors. We couldn't come to church. We couldn't hug the family. We couldn't invite our families and friends over to our home. We were isolated from everybody, especially if one of your family members got the COVID, they would have to lock themselves up in a room and not come out. You would put the food at the door. I praise God and I thank God that me and my wife never got it. My children did. My daughter did. And her kids did. And I would go and she would open the door and I, right there on the doorstep, I would pray for them. And they would say, aren't you afraid? Well, whatever it is, I'm going to pray for them. And I would pray for them, for my, my granddaughter. And my daughter, in the name of Jesus, amen. My, my son-in-law went to the hospital. They took him and they put him in a tent outside. And I went and we prayed. We had a, they wouldn't let me in. I had to pray from the outside. So we had a little tiny little taste of what that is. Hallelujah. And you know, this man was crying and dying in the inside. Not because of the leprosy, but because of the isolation of the problem that he had. That he could not come to his family. And then he heard, hallelujah, that Jesus was coming by. He says, I got to go there because he knew. He had heard a lot of stories that when Jesus walked by, things began to happen. So he, as he, Jesus was coming into the town he went right through the town, and he didn't yell out, amen, I'm a leper. He says, I got it. He pointed right, and he went right to Jesus. And he told him, Jesus, have mercy upon me. If it be thy will, you can heal me. If it be thy will, Lord, you can cleanse me. And the Lord looked at him. Jesus looked at him. And he reached forth and he touched him. And that leprosy went away instantly because he was touched by the master. He was touched by Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. That you're sick, dying, and then all of a sudden Jesus would come and touch you and your whole life changes. Well, a lot of us, that's what exactly what happened to us. We were sick, and Jesus touched us. A few months ago, a grandson of one of the members of the church and of Escondido, when I used to pastor there, they called me. They, he was in the hospital with leukemia, and they gave him a, a few weeks, maybe a month or so, to live. So we went. We went to go pray for him. And as I walked into the room, and he was in isolation, and, and the first thing I told him was when I walked in, I said, God bless you. How are you 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I am fine. Is he still abiding in your heart? Yes, he does. Then you are going to walk out of this place next week. We prayed for him, and the next week, he walked out of that hospital. Hallelujah. I didn't ask him, how are you feeling? Nothing. I know how he was feeling. He was feeling miserable. He had all kinds of tubes and all kinds of stuff. I went through that experience. Amen. Because I ate too many cupcakes, too many sweets. And I did it to myself. And when they took the kidney stone out, they said, oh, you'll be all right. And then I got an infection. And they said, you'll be all right. And I got swallowed up like a balloon. And they said, you'll be all right. And I said, no, I need a touch from the Lord. Hallelujah. And everybody in the church was praying. And God touched me. That's why I'm here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you, church, you're not alone. You have a family. I'm not talking about your father, your mother, your brother, and your sister. This is your family, the family of the Lord, the same family, hallelujah, that's been washed by the same blood, hallelujah, that you have been washed, the same family that bears that name, hallelujah, that is above all name. That name is Jesus, hallelujah. That's the family we belong to, hallelujah. And this leopard was surprised, and everybody, when he walked in, they saw his robe. And as he walked toward Jesus, people backed up and said, whoa, he's a leopard. And they walked away, and then he cried out to the Lord. And Jesus touched him and healed him. Hallelujah. And then the Lord told him, Jesus said, tell nobody, but go tell the priest. And I wonder, why would he say, tell no one? Because, see, the people in the outside world, they don't understand what we understand. They don't know what we know. Hallelujah. They haven't had the revelation. Hallelujah. What life is all about. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't understand. Hallelujah. If you die, you don't die. Hallelujah. Amen. If you die, you go to sleep, and you're all awakened someday. They don't understand that. So he said, don't tell nobody, but go tell the priest. Hallelujah. And he was happy. And then all of a sudden, he begins to get to the temple. And he walks inside the temple with a great big smile. Hallelujah. Like some of you walked this morning, I saw looking at you, observing everybody. And some of you walked in with a smile, but some of you walked in with, oh, Lord, another day. Okay, what's Brother Johnny going to sing? What's he going to say? What's the praise team going to sing? And then all of a sudden, big things begin to change. Oh, this is good. I feel good. Hallelujah. I can feel something. Maybe, maybe it was good that I came to church. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of a sudden, hallelujah, this man walks in. This leopard walks in. No longer a leopard. He walks into the temple, and he begins to praise God and shout. And they told him, whoa, wait, hold, hold it. Who are you? And then one of the priests says, oh, I know. He was that leopard. And they looked at him, stopped right there, hold, and they examined him. Looked all around, make sure he was okay. He was fine. And he said, what happened to you? Because we've never had this incident before. No one has come into the temple being healed from leprosy. He smiled. If he could have, he would have sang this song. He would have said, I was shackled by a heavy burden. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And then with guilt and shame that I couldn't go to my home, but something happened. This is what happened. Jesus touched me. And they said, who? I said, Jesus touched me. Oh, and the Pharisees. And the high priest, they, they knew about the name of Jesus, and that disturbed him. And he began to worship and glorify and exalt and jump up and down. And he said, he touched me. He touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul, something happened. And I know, because Jesus touched me. 
Hallelujah. And you and I have gone through that procedure. We were troubled, worried, sick, disturbed, distressed, and Jesus touched our lives. And now we can sing, since I blessed, since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleans and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. Hallelujah. I'll shout it through eternity. He touched me. Yes, Jesus touched me. Hallelujah. Maybe you can say, like others, well, it was good, but Jesus was there and he touched him. Hallelujah. Jesus was there in visual, and they saw, he saw him and he touched him. Because I was asked that question Have you seen Jesus? I said, No, I haven't seen him, but I know he's here. Because his word says, whether two or three gathered in my name, I will be there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be there. Hallelujah. And then he says, I will not forsake you nor leave you. I will be with you always. Believe. Trust. Believe. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you another little story. Because you can say, well, if Jesus would touch me, I would be different. Maybe you have lost that feeling, that touch. We need a touch of God. A depressed woman with a great need. The Bible talks about another story about another woman who was very distressed. She has spent all of her money with doctors and everything, and she was depressed. She had no joy. She had no life. Everything she had, she spent it because she was very ill. For 12 years, the Bible says she was sick. And one day, Jesus came from the mountain. And as he's walking through, hallelujah, she says, ah, oh, here's my chance. She wasn't going to shout out and say, son of David, Jesus, master, touch me. No, no, she was determined. She was determined and she said, I'm going to rush through that crowd. And if I can only touch his hem of his garment, that shall be sufficient. If I can just touch him, hallelujah, that'll be enough for me to be healed, hallelujah. Whew. So she went where Jesus was going by. And the crowd was a multitude of crowd, and she pushed through the crowd as she could. She was desperate. She was desperate with a big need. As she pushed through the crowd, she reached where Jesus was, and she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops. Hallelujah. He stops instantly and says, who touched me? And his disciples said, Lord, everybody's touching you. There's a lot of people around you. Everybody's pressing. No, 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 no. Somebody touched me because I felt virtue that came out of me. Hallelujah. And she came up to me and said, Lord, it was I. It was me. She was trembling. She, she, she didn't know what was going to happen because the master stopped. She got his attention. She didn't call out his name. She was desperate. She just touched his hem of his garment. Hallelujah. And she was relieved. She was healed from her sickness. Hallelujah. 
And she too, all of a sudden, stands up, Lord. And Jesus said, go your way. You are healed. Your faith has healed your body. And this is, this is my point, church. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you're desperate enough, we got two things we can do. We can call out his name, but at the same time, if you're desperate, you can come up and touch the hem of his garment. Because you got to believe that he is here. You can say, well, brother, it's that the church is not full. I remember when the church is full, oh, hallelujah, the power of God, uh-uh. It said, well, there's two or three gathered in my name. Well, there's two or three gathered in my name. I will be there. And there's two more than two here gathered in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he is here. Jesus is here. And if you are depressed, he will bless you and touch you. All you got to do is reach out and touch him. Reach out and touch him. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday. And today, hallelujah. So no matter what you're going through, if you need a touch of God, I need one. All we got to do is reach out to him. Church, that is the simplicity of the gospel. Hallelujah. That Jesus came to this world to seek and to find that which was lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not complicated. It's very simple. Hallelujah. You can hear the best message there is. But the simplicity of the word is very simple. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's here. Hallelujah. You're here because there's a purpose in your life. He wanted you to be here. You know that thing, you, that little question you had in your mind? You know that depression or whatever it was, that sickness, or somebody that needs to be, that needs salvation? He's the answer. Jesus is the answer, hallelujah, for not the world, but for you today. Hallelujah. The writer wrote, for the world today, but you and I know that it's for you today. Hallelujah. As the world is in so much chaos, going through wars and rumors of wars, look at what's happening all over the world. But it's been the same like that all the time. You can say, oh, why, why are the Israelites killing so many people? It's been like that all the time because, it, because Israel, it's God's chosen people. Amen. And in, back then, if you read your Bible, the Lord would tell the prophet, Go tell the soldiers to take out the whole city. Not just the men, women and children, everybody. Hallelujah. Why? Because they disobeyed God's word. But Jesus came to change everything. The thoughts are still there. The mind hole is still there. But he came to change everything. That's why the writer says, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. I invite you to stand up with me. Hallelujah. Jesus healed so many people. He touched so many people. The blind man. The dumb man, Jairus' daughter, she was sick. They came and told him about him. She dies, and Jesus went still to the house and resurrected her up. So you see, just to show us, it doesn't matter your condition. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, your problem. Oh, Jesus, he can help you. He's here to help you. Hallelujah. He'll open doors you never knew were there. Hallelujah. He'll give you understanding you never knew understood. Jesus is the answer for you today. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you to this altar. And if you have a problem as the choir 
the praise team sings, hallelujah, amen. Listen to what they're singing, and then come and touch the hem of his garment. If you don't want to come up, that's fine. Right there where you're at, Jesus can touch you, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. He's here. Mm. I feel him, hallelujah. I can feel it. That's the simplicity of the word. That's the simplicity of the power of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is here and he's waiting for you. But there's no buts. No matter what your request is, ask him. To ask him. Touch him. And you know what, church? You and I have experienced this already. We've seen the miracles of God already, hallelujah. We know what it's all about. We know, hallelujah, that He's here. Hallelujah. You, we know, hallelujah, you know, hallelujah, what God can do and what He's done and what He's doing and what He's about to do. Hallelujah. I feel it right now, hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, God, we love you, Jesus, for your name, hallelujah, is powerful. It's above all names. Your name, hallelujah. When we call out your name, Jesus, you touch our lives. You heal our bodies. Oh, God, touch this church, Lord. We've experienced this before, Lord. Continue to bless us. Continue to bless this church in your precious name. Let's give a hand clap to the name of Jesus right now, to that powerful blessing that we have in the kingdom of God. Yes, he is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, Brother Mena. Amen, amen, and amen to that. Amen. God is good, and we are blessed with the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't know about you, but I wasn't born in this thing. I wasn't born into the name of Jesus. Amen. But I'm so grateful today that I am and now my family is in Jesus' name growing in the presence of God. When you get a hold of this thing, church, when you get a hold of this thing, it's so important that we train and teach our family, the generations to come. But not just our family, but our friends and our loved ones, that they understand that they get a hold of the name of Jesus. Amen. It is the most sacred thing this world will ever know, has ever known. And it is important that we spend an opportunity this week. Share with somebody the word that was received today. Share with someone the name of Jesus, to believe in it, to believe in it. Amen. I say this every year, and I mean it because people's hearts start to change during this time of year with Thanksgiving and Christmas in mind. And so this is a wonderful and powerful message today that we receive. And I want you to take it home with you. And I want you to know, first and foremost, I can with Jesus. Say that with me. Say, I can with Jesus. Amen. And then I want you to tell someone, you can with Jesus too. You can with Jesus too. Let's be, let it be that mantra for us this week to trust him, to believe in him, and to help someone else to trust and believe in the name of Jesus. Before we're dismissed, I know I went through it so quickly uh, earlier. Uh, we were just in the spirit of God, and you know, God was just moving in the songs. And But I want to remind everybody one last time, young people, praise the Lord, young people, on November 19th, after service, uh, that's the week before Thanksgiving, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, um, we want to invite you all uh, to come out to our, the Friendsgiving Feast that is put on by the youth leadership. Uh, it'll be about 3 p.m. Uh, please uh, join us that day. Um, if, I, if I know correctly, yeah, it's, it's right here at church. I'm not sure if we'll be having it downstairs afterwards, the youth room or in the fellowship hall. But uh, see your local youth leaders for more information. Uh, please, please plan on joining us, young people. I know some of you have to leave after church for whatever reason, but please try to make it. Set the, si the time aside to be with us, to fellowship with us, and to give thanks to the Lord for your youth group. Also that week, 
amen, is the youth conference, uh, the National Youth Conference, also known as Convention, amen. This year it is a National Youth Conference. And uh, if, if you haven't made plans to go up and to stay there the week or the weekend, that's all right. There's services on Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. I believe there's a couple of things throughout the day on Saturday. Uh, it's not that far. It's just up the road from us. You know, it takes about an hour and 15 to get to Anaheim, uh, especially during the holidays when there's not a lot of movement. Uh, just be careful when you go by the malls. There's a lot going on there. Um, but make your way on up if you can. Take your kids. Take your family. Uh, rejoice in the services, amen. There's lots of singing. Uh, praise team, if you go, let's bring back a song, amen, in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let's, let's go to have a fellowship in Jesus' name, but there's a lot to do there. There's a lot of different activities. Uh, of course, there's lots of eateries around the area, so take your family, rejoice in the day uh, if you're able to do so, um, and then come back to be with us that Sunday. Uh, all of our sisters, I believe Sister Norma is handing out individual RSVP cards. Praise the Lord. I want one. I felt, I felt a little left out last week. But she was uh, handing them out last week. If you didn't get one last week, she has more. I believe she has one for every sister, every, uh, uh, everyone that's part of the women's auxiliary. Um, so she has them in the back. And it's so that you can just write if you're going to be coming uh, during the uh, women's banquet. Um, so that's going to be on December 2nd so that you can fellowship, have a wonderful time in Jesus' name, uh, and just rejoice together. So if, get, that, get that card if you didn't get one last week. If you did get one last week, uh, if you lost it, it's okay. Just give her your name. She'll put you down on the list uh, as well as the rest of the women's board who are planning this wonderful, wonderful uh, end-of-year event to glorify God together. And I'm sorry I didn't download it last week in English, but we have it in English as well. We'll make sure it's there next week so that uh, it's up on the screen in English. Church, let's say a prayer in Jesus' name. We'll be dismissed in that precious and wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, we go before you, God, and we give you all the honor and the glory, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, because you are good, God, because you are mighty, and because with, with you, Jesus, we have all the answers we need. Your word says that that when the Spirit of God is in us, there, we, we have everything that we need. And in the name of Jesus, we receive all those things. God, I thank you for the message we received today. There is no greater message than the name of Jesus and the message of Jesus Christ. And this world is in need of it, Lord. We are in need of it, God. Even if we're on top, Lord Jesus, and we feel like everything's okay, we are in need of being connected with you, Lord. And so we dedicate ourselves today, not only at this altar call during this service, Lord, but we come in celebration of your name. We dedicate our hearts and our minds that we might be stayed on you, Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to help us everywhere we go through this week that we might walk in the name of Jesus, that we might abide in the presence of our Lord and Savior. And so we go before you, Lord, today, giving you thanks and praise asking you for all manner of things, but for more than anything, Lord, for your presence and your love, your life inside of us, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your work. And we ask you as we leave this place, Lord Jesus, that you would walk with us, Lord, everywhere we go, that we would do all things in the name of Jesus, and that we would come to a revelation of your name greater than we knew before. We ask this in the name of Jesus. And everybody shouts, amen. God bless you, church. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful week and be, be rejoicing in the name of the Lord.